My name is Jim Shooter, former editor-in-chief of Marvel, uh, also Valiant and other places. And I have to say, Mark Hu at 42 is great. Welcome to Mark Who 42's Universe here on Subspace Radio, the GeekCast Radio Network, our website markwho42.com, and all around the interweb thingy. I'm your host, Mark Baumgarten. Welcome. We have a great show for you today, but let me introduce our co-host, Vicki Jakabowski. Hey, Vicki. Hey, Mark. How's it going? It's a going. Another day in paradise. Another day in paradise. Every, everything fine with the weather there? Uh, we're supposed to get snow this afternoon, but yesterday was 70, so we'll see. Okay. Well, we, like I said, we have a very special episode. We're talking about a brand new Kickstarter campaign from the guys at the 77. We've had them on before, uh, but this time we're talking about their new book, Pandora, and uh, it should be really good. Uh, and we're going to talk to some of the creators of the book. First, let's introduce uh, the editor of the book. It's Joe Healy. Hi, Joe. Hi, Mark. Thanks for How's having me. You? It's great to have you here. Uh, tell everyone a little about yourself. Um, well, I'm I'm one of the directors over at the 77 comic. Um, so um, back along in 2020, I was approached um, I think because nobody else would do it, I joke. <laughs> I, joke. Um, I was approached to help out um, with this burgeoning uh, brand new comic, The 77. Um, disclaimer, my older brother is one of the other directors and he's also one of the comic writers. Mm-hmm. So uh, that's Dave Healy. And um, yeah, I, I sort of fell down this rabbit hole of, comics and comic production um something I never thought I would ever ever do um but um as 2020 was just like a chaotic year yeah it was just one of those things that uh, just happened and it's it's been a mad ride basically okay uh thank you for coming on the show we also have a very special guest, an artist uh, who's doing some of the artwork in uh, Pandora and has also worked on Blazer, which is a great uh, comic that we have uh, with Steve McManus writing all that. Steve's a great guy. We had him on the show. It's Andrew Richmond. Hello, Andrew. Hi there. Hi. Just coming you? Off, you're just coming off COVID, aren't you? Yeah, I'm 10 days through and it's it's a strange one it's not been very nice all right well yeah. tell everyone a little about yourself so i'm an artist writer editor publisher all manner of bits and pieces but i as joe was saying in the the beginning of the pandemic i think we all started to do comics quite seriously mm-hmm. so i was i was invited by well, I can't even remember if it was over Twitter or Facebook. So I ended up doing a story in, I think it was issue two of the 77 with yeah. Dave Bedford uh, called Trump, Trump La Mort, which mm-hmm. was a, a, yeah, he, he basically wanted something that was a bit more like a Misty sort of comic. like a, Right. Um, I, I know what Misty is. I, I've seen it. Yeah. I've read it. Yeah. yeah so, he, so in contrast to the sort of action more 2008 AD mm-hmm. stuff in there. And then on the back of that, I was invited to be the art editor and one of the artists on Blazer. Yeah. So I came up with a look and feel of Blazer. So all the different styles and the sort of homage to the... Yeah, that, that totally brings back uh, 70s boys uh, comics. That, I loved exactly it. Exactly right. Yeah. I mean, also with, with nods to to all manner of different comics, especially mm-hmm. action and battles yes. and Misty, as I said, and, and all the great comics that we 
loved as kids and we can still you know we can still get hold of mm. but it was quite interesting because my brother came to visit and i showed him a copy of blazer and he just went well this is from the 70s <laughs> and I went, no, no, no this is brand new he said wow it looks just like a comic would have had as kids um and then so we've done two issues of blazer yeah and joe and i have been talking about pandora for quite a while for about a year now Right, and it was almost like, right, let's do it. So it suddenly became live, and we've started getting the art. And I'm the artist on Penny Pentagram. Love uh, Penny Pentagram. Love yeah. it. So I did Penny Pentagram in the annual, mm -hmm. so an annual with um, David Thomas. So I'm the new artist on it. Um, but she's now migrated over to the Mighty Pandora. Um, she found a new home there. Yay! So it's yeah. So that's a bit of an exclusive. It's it's great fun. She's also well currently on the cover. So I've done the cover of Pandora. Mm -hmm. So I'm also doing um, sort of our editorial duties on Pandora as well. So the logo that's behind you is mine. Oh, is it? Ah, I yeah. can see it right there. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, you know, working closely with Joe, we sort of collaborated on different colorways and and what we wanted to to look like. But it did, I mean, as I said, it did start, I think, as like a sort of pastiche of Misty. Mm -hmm. But then it has just grown and has become something different. It's yeah. become its own entity. And I think what we found is with indie comics and with comics in general, if you've got a name, people want to work with you, like Alan Hebden, you know, okay. on the back of on the back of Steve McManus on Blazer. Mm -hmm. so we've got an amazing Alan Hebden story in there. But anyway, I digress. Joe, not just the Don't digress. <laughs> <laughs> we, could, you we, know, could, we could talk. Well, we just brought up, uh, you know, boys comics and we kind of Misty is a girls comics. What is the difference? What was the difference back in the day? literally oh. yeah well go on joe sorry i i didn't know a difference i'm one of those um who was brought up in a i i'm the youngest of five and i'm mm -hmm. the other one as well and i was obviously brought up surrounded by uh boys comics right Except i didn't know they were boys comics because my mum <laughs> oh, okay. i'm right there with joe you got it I had no idea there was boys versus girls. Yeah, I, I first told that to Vicky. She's like, what? what? But in, oh. the, in the 70s. Oh. In the 70s, yeah. Yeah. Now, I had an older brother and I and a bunch of other younger sisters and brothers. But um, it just my older brother and I were into all the same things. The Legos. We both wanted to be astronauts. Mm. Um, but I was a girl in the 70s, and that wasn't a thing yet. And... Uh, Mm -hmm. <laughs> and love the comic books and action figures and sci-fi i had no idea that there was a difference yeah uh, i i'm i'm with you there simply because um my mum introduced myself and my brothers to all these mm -hmm. fantastic things she was reading um planets of the apes when it came out in the 50s mm. yes um she she read the hobbit to us mm. there was never any distinction because mom read really heavy science fiction as well she'd be reading isaac asimov she'd be reading Anne mccaffrey and i just absorbed all those influences apart from the hobbit i hated the hobbit i had that <laughs> every year so i i always cringed whenever and when i went to secondary school right had to read go through the hobbit again it was like oh not again but um but yeah she instilled all this you know this love for uh, science fiction fantasy horror she got my brothers reading salem's lot so you know it was like yeah she's she was this quite cool figure but going back to the difference i realize now that my brothers never read my misty comics they never uh -huh. read Mm. and I didn't didn't know that because it was like on a Saturday morning you'd have a big pile of comics and everybody would be fighting over 2000 AD or or Buster or or something similar 
but uh, yeah like I say I, I never realized there was that quite that distinction but going back to Pandora I I absolutely adore Blazer and it, it was the graphic design uh, elements of Blazer which made me approach Andy to ask him to come on to the project because that that is those covers are just amazing but um certainly with pandora i didn't want it to be that exclusive this is a girl's comic right i wanted it to be open to everybody it's not include you know it's it's inclusive rather than exclusive Mm -hmm. so i'm i'm very confident there will be stories in here that um anybody will enjoy anybody can read um obviously you know with pandora we've gone for a a name that's sort of uh reminiscent of the pandemic that we've just gone through um but it's we've certainly been influenced by that as well Mm -hmm. so yeah but that's just my take on boys and girls comics anyway but going back as i was saying to the 70s what actually was happening is that the publishers they had different departments that yes were mm. yes so they had um adventure comics humor comics girls yeah. comics right and there was a very large market for jinty tammy bunty misty you know and they were basically stories of schoolgirls mm-hmm. up to misadventures or you know whereas in the boys comics right. you would have well, call them boys' comics. In the humor comics, you'd have Beryl the Peril and Minnie the Minx. Right. And all the girls, like, like, they were, it was like 50 50 split. But I think with the um, girls and boys' comics, mm-hmm. we'd have, it was specifically, so it was the look and feel. I think that what I call boys' comics are more gender free. Anyone could pick them up. Whereas, right. they'd pictures of flowers. Or you know you'd get you'd get a, a bracelet free, you get a bracelet free with a girls comic, whereas the boys comic you'd get a snapper or a you know a spinner, a spinner, a spinner. Yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, but as as Joe quite rightly said, if you if you look through that, but as a boy, you know it's like wearing a dress. <laughs> you know, you wear it. Yeah, dress. yeah. Obviously, you know, unless you were David Bowie, you'd be fine. There you go. There you um, go. As you but if you were a seven-year-old yeah. kid wearing a dress. Um, uh-huh. But then, yeah, we we just love the comics and we love the the idea of, of being able to take these starting points and then run with it. And we've, as, as adults, we could, we're creating new stuff and as joe joe said pandora you wouldn't know it's you know it's not a girl's comic okay. but when we first launched blazer we made the mistake of saying something like it's the you know the blazing comic for boys right and we retracted that immediately because we realized that we were wrong um as far as i remember and then we changed it to bright sparks mm-hmm you know, coming for Bright Sparks, because we were homaging action and battle. Yes, and yes, you were. were. Papers, but we're 21st century, and even though it's meant to be set in the 70s, mm-hmm. like, we have to, you know, we have to be very wary that, you know, we 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 have to be careful, you know, it's a, it's yeah, a modern I... market. Yeah. You know, times have changed. All right. You know, we've got in about 15 minutes in the show and we need to do our first plug. Joe, where where can people find out about this Kickstarter campaign for Pandora? Well, certainly if anybody's a Twitter user, um, get over to Twitter. Uh, the 77 Comic Publications uh, handle over there. Or you can follow me if you want to see updates about rabbits and comics <laughs> and things like that. Um, but I'll go back to rabbits later. Um, we're also on Facebook. Uh, there is a dedicated Pandora group on Facebook. So if you pop in Pandora comic um, into any search word, uh, sorry, search uh, bar, you will find us. We're also on Kickstarter. Again, just pop in Pandora and we're the only Kickstarter on there at the moment that will come up 
if you do that. So mm-hmm. our Kickstarter ends in, um, I think, another 20 something or so days. Yeah. 26 days to what, go. What would the last day be? The uh, 15th? I, think. Um, I believe that's, it might be the 14th. 14th, okay. So um, we are very close to Targus, actually. Mm-hmm. And I was actually um, emboldened to release a additional story. Yes, I was going to bring that up later. It's called Home. <laughs> it is. And we'll talk a little about that later. We'll, we'll get back to that later. But um, no, and this Kickstarter campaign, uh, it's for the book. Uh, and some of the some of the backing, uh, some of the rewards, I, I think you can get a print edition uh, for seven pounds. And for you and us in America, there'd be a six uh, pound postage and parcel uh, edition. So the total of that would be about seventeen dollars and thirteen cents. Uh, for the digital edition, it's four pounds, and I know in America that would come around to five twenty seven. So you know, it's it's inexpensive. They're great books. Like I, you know, I have everything from the the seventy seven. I love the brand. It, it's great. Um, you know. What else can I say? What other what other rewards are there? I know a lot of them are gone. A lot um, of them are gone already. I'm afraid um, quite a few have already gone. Yeah. Um, but I will just double check while we are talking. Okay. Um, I've got. I actually popped a, a reward on uh, earlier. One of our regular artists for the '77, who mm-hmm. was Division '77 in the oh, annual. Oh, love it! Yeah. But he also draws V. Um, oh, oh, the guy who draws. Oh, okay, okay. So um, we've been really fortunate that he's actually um, gifted a color sketch, character sketch for the new story, um, which is amazing. Um, it's debatable. I would call that a color sketch. It's a very <laughs> beautifully <laughs> rendered painting, um, isn't it? <laughs> double check. It's still available, and I, I, I'll be quite honest with you. I, I want it for myself. It, it's, it's absolutely beautiful, and knowing the backstory as well to it, um, uh, I'm very tempted. Um, but certainly, yeah, you can grab a, a Pandora T-shirt. So in that fantastic purple, and for the golden Pandora logo that Andy has uh, quite rightly said he came up with. Um, and there are signed scripts. There is a signed The Devil's Bride print. Mm-hmm. Um, so we were going to have a story included in issue one called The Devil's Bride, which right. um, my brother wrote. Um, Pete Weston, um, just so you know, Pete Weston uh, drew Dominica's ring for Blazer One, but he's. Yeah. Also- the son of Mike Weston, uh-huh. who is this fantastic artist who's mainly known for battle. Um, I think he did Eagle as well, didn't he, Andy? There's yeah, and oh, 2000 AD. Yeah. And um, anyway, artist. his son Pete, um, mm-hmm. unfortunately, injured his hand and wasn't able to um, obviously get. The Devil's Bride in for issue one, but it will be appearing in issue two, and you can get a fantastic signed print print there. And just to let you know, Pete, he put he doesn't really shout about this, but if I'd worked on it, I would be shouting. He was one of the uh, lead animators for um, an American Tale, Five or Goes West. Oh uh, yeah. And also, um, he works on Roger Rabbit, um, also the snowman and the snow dog. Um, so he is this um, amazing animator, this whole back history of uh, animation, who has come to comics in a sort of uh, sort of roundabout way. But yeah, really pleased to have Pete back, and uh, he will be appearing in issue two. Well, that sounds fantastic. Oh my gosh, I, I can't even wait to see issue one just with the little bits and clips you guys have put up on the Kickstarter and, and uh, Facebook and Twitter. I, I don't know, I think I, <laughs> I love a good dark story. Mm-hmm. Uh, I've been loving the Penny Pentagram. 
it's like old school Sabrina and um, what's it, little Buffy the Vampire Slayer thrown in there. Yeah. <laughs> You're sort of taking it a little bit darker. A little now. bit further. A little bit, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'd... But that's fine. See, I well, grew up with the Hammer films and absolutely loved all of those, you know, Dracula in color. Well, of course, <laughs> you know. On the, um, <laughs> you need the red blood. How do, you, how, do you do, how do you do Dracula without the red blood? It doesn't make but sense. Yeah, Universal did fine, but the hand films yeah. were fabulous. <laughs> on oh, UK yeah. television, there's a TV channel called Talking Pictures. Yeah, I, I, yes, I know. Yeah. That. So Talking Pictures last night, they've got something called Cellar Club, mm -hmm. and it's hosted by Caroline Monroe. Are and you serious? Guest, yeah, yeah, yeah. And their guest last night was Madeline Smith. And oh. then they showed Vampire Lovers afterwards. So it was a full, the proper, yeah. <laughs> and, and what's, what's this show called? What's, what's the series called that, that does this? Uh, um, it's Talking Pictures. And what and time is that on? Because I have Talking Pictures. Nine o'clock. So that would be, um, okay. On a Friday night. Okay. And they show three movies. And they, you, they can be mainly horror but they also have, you know, sort of um, crime or different genre styles, all presented by Caroline Monroe in the Cellar Club. Right. Fantastic. Yeah, I but was busy watching so, comic. I was busy watching comic. Uh, big no, big red nose day. Big no, ah. red nose day. <laughs> so I didn't. I didn't get to say. I love red nose day. That, that was, was on the. Yeah, we were sort of flicking. I think it stopped about. 10 o'clock 10 o'clock yeah and then then they went to bbc2 for half an hour and then they went yeah but um talking i digress to... we're talking we're supposed to be oh. talking about pandora here. we are but it's all linked it's all what we're yeah all linked. Okay. You, you can feel the the connections the influences i feel it yeah and you know i love 70s 60s and 70s horror film i even 30s and 40s for that matter um they kind of lost me in the late 80s and we won't talk about today's horror films because you know they show everything. They're not interesting. There's no intrigue. And there's no Christopher Lee. So sorry. No. <laughs> mm. oh, or Peter Cushing. Like, yeah, Cushing was in the one yeah. last night. It's very, this conversation is very similar to the editorial uh, conversations me and Andy have. <laughs> you usually start playing, it'll be 45 minutes and then that's it. Three hours later, we've gone through the <laughs> favorite genres favorite films and then yeah. usually i'll say something and andy will be like ah hold on a moment and then the next thing i know it suddenly appears um mm -hmm. like this. Film. Uh, yeah uh, yeah <laughs> people if you can't can, if people can't see it which they can't it's what is that called hello, hello horror? yeah hello okay yeah so it's a sort of folk horror it's a lot of fanzine um during the pandemic, I, I fell into sort of like fanzine, sort of like small print, mm -hmm. small press, um, sort of a, a dark hole. And um, it turns out Andy did as well. Yeah, so, I always have. I've always oh. been down that hole. <laughs> um, the and Times, you know, we, we get that delivered every every month. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but also Hellebore produced this as well. Ah, okay. it's cold no for radio. No good for radio. You got to read it out loud. You got to tell people what it is. A cult Britain, the hellebore guide to a cult Britain in Northern Ireland. And Ooh, like, that looks interesting. Beautifully produced, sort of like. Oh wow! Pad. Yeah, Just folks, you're easy. missing a great, great uh, video here. <laughs> that looks places. like a great book. Yeah, yeah, and again, it's beautiful. It, it's produced by you know enthusiasts, and you we managed to stumble upon it. It's not on Kickstarter. Mm -hmm. It's just again, it's just so so many amazing things being produced because of the pandemic. I think mean, I think people yeah. are just focused on entertaining themselves. Okay, um, well we're, we're going to take a break here, guys. Uh, you're listening to Marku 42's Universe here on Subspace Radio. Geekcast Radio Network, now on Florida Geek Scene, by the way, uh, marku42.com. 
and all around the interweb thingy. This is really cool. I, I cannot wait for Pandora, and we'll be talking more about that right after this. We'll be back with more of Mark Who 42's universe. Hello, geeks and geekettes. I'm Steve Megatron, and if you're looking for a podcast that covers a vast array of geeky topics, then check out Altered Geek. Altered Geek covers superheroes, Star Trek, pop culture, comics, film, television, animation, gaming, tech, and more. So check out Altered Geek and get altered, get geeky with the Altered Geeks every Friday on iTunes, Stitcher, Google Play, SoundCloud, Blog Talk Radio, and the GeekCast Radio Network. You are listening to Mark Who 42's Universe. Welcome back to more of Mark Who 42's Universe here on Subspace Radio, the GeekCast Radio Network, Florida Geek Scene, MarkWho42.com, and all around the interweb thingy. Boy, that's a lot to say. I'm your host, Mark Baumgarten. With me today is my co-host, Vicki Jakubowski, and our guest from ben Pandora Comics, it's Joe Healy and Andrew Richmond. Welcome back, guys. Hi there. Hi, yeah. All right. <laughs> Vicky, why don't you ask the next question? Oh, my gosh. Um, what to ask? I always feel like I ask silly questions like, geez, what inspired you to do this? Because <laughs> I always like to know that sort of stuff. I mean, Joe, what what really pushed you to, to come up with Pandora? Besides uh, the pandemic. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Uh, do you know, I think it was, I didn't want um, my sort of like my teammates to sort of um, fall at the first hurdle. I, they rushed released that we would um, produce this um, potentially a girls comic in the vein of uh, Misty or Jinty or Tammy. Um, and I was sat there a bit quiet and I thought, do you know what I, I really as much as I love those comics and they were a, a massive bit, sort of inspiration to me um as I got older I absolutely love that genre um I really wanted to make something that I thought was current and fresh but mm. still had that mix of I think somebody mentioned intrigue earlier but curious stories um a mix of horror sci-fi a bit of fantasy um and like I said I think that's what really inspired me to do it because I didn't want us to make a mistake as it were as a publications team I didn't want us to create something which would either polarize audiences or um not be right for the time so um, I'm a bit tenacious in that I don't give up very easily. Um, like I say, it was, it was um, we released it a little bit too early. Um, due to our publication schedule, this was never going to be released um, any sooner than what it has done. Mm -hmm. So we all had March as March 22 as, uh, as our release date. But of course, people were curious. People were desperate to find out a bit more um but yeah i'm just really pleased that we have got to this stage um with the likes of andy who i can't thank enough um it, it's yeah it's uh, an exciting time but yeah my pure inspiration was just that i did not want this to to fall flat well, i can understand that too often when we uh put things into uh small boxes and it sounds like you really wanted to just take something that you clearly love and just expand it into yeah. something that would appeal to just about everybody. And I just wish that you guys could produce these more often because I want to know more. <laughs> I mean, like red by night, black by day, what happened next? Oh yeah. You know? I can't wait. <laughs> it's like, I don't want to. Can you give us any spoilers? Can you tell us what's coming? No, up? no spoilers. No, no, I no. I want to wait for the issue to arrive. Okay. <laughs> it's, it's now, it's now ramping up a little. So thank you so much. Um, I just let so you know, red by night is what the, the rest of the team call. Um, they take the Mickey. Goblin blinders, or uh, <laughs> else do they say um, peaky goblins? But um, <laughs> so it's, um, 
it, it's it's an absolute thrill to to realize that people actually read it I know it's appeared twice in in the comic but yeah that that's that's been thank you so much for mentioning it it's, it's given me quite the Victorian gothic is also an area that I like a lot uh the, all the gothic writers and the early sci-fi writers i just I eat them up and I kind of like, I would love a whole book of this, you know, kind of like my son's manga books. And I just, I just want the whole series and I want it now because I am an impatient person. <laughs> well, if you're a millionaire. You can... <laughs> <laughs> if I was a millionaire, I'd have a bigger house. If I had a million dollars. <laughs> I, would, if I... I would have to wait for my son to move out for me and be able to get my own home office. <laughs> Well, I'll, I'll be honest. If if com if you actually make money out of comics, I I, I wouldn't be working full time uh, yeah. as well as doing this. So um, it'd be wonderful to concentrate solely on producing that story. Just to let you know, there are I've got about ten other stories um, in the universe <laughs> already there um, when this one actually uh, ends. And um, certainly the inspiration for that is um, I used to work in uh, Birmingham, which is mm -hmm. the UK's uh, rather England's second city. Right. And um, I, the building I worked in was near the, the, the law courts and uh, quite an old building. And I, I sort of discovered lots of connections to historical figures to this and I also, um, I studied illustration at university and I was really oh. fascinated by an artist called Joseph Wright of Derby. Okay. And he painted the Industrial Revolution. So um, it, it, was, it was all those influences and, and you know, discovering, uh, oh goodness, Washington Irving came to Birmingham. He, he was inspired wow. by Sleepy Hollow in Birmingham. At, right. And hall so um perhaps he he might make an appearance somewhere further down the line. Okay. yeah it was, it, that that was just that that confluence of all these different little little things that I was discovering where I used to work but um yeah all right um Joe you know, uh, talking about your work at the 77 but uh, in Pandora, your story is called El Bonito. Uh, yeah. Tell us a little about. Um, I I tend to do filler stories. So when there's when we are struggling to fill something, I always end up with um, a scrabble to to do something. But the adventure, right. the adventures of El Bonito is, has gone past filler stage. Um, I commissioned a illustration of my pet rabbit um, <laughs> by Andrew Sawyers back in Inktober. And um, I asked him to, because the rabbit's called Bramble, but we, we've we made right. up a whole, um, he's got this whole double life. He's got this ulterior persona that he's actually called El Benito. And he'll, mm -hmm. you know, he, I walk in and he demands where his greens are. But um, uh, certainly the illustration that Andy sent me was the, of this awesome space rabbit, it, it, rabbit in mm -hmm. sort of like mechanic suit. And um, that was the genesis of the adventures of El Benito. Mm -hmm. So we've got this um, fantastic art by Andy. I Honestly, I, he, I don't know if you've seen the recent rabbit. It, there's no. an image on the the kickstarter um so you've got this hardened um battle rabbit who mm -hmm. um is trying to save his planet carrots and um it's just a little light-hearted little i wouldn't say space opera um star nav is our space opera but yeah it's just a little bit light-hearted fun but with just some amazing art by andy sawyers who illustrates the cell for our uh 77. Okay. Vicky? I, I'm just in awe of, of both <laughs> of, uh, of, of our guests. And Andrew, I, I, when I first read that you do a sketch a day. Yes, you know, I was going to ask that, yeah. I, yeah. I, I just, I have to know how that goes because I can't draw a stick figure to save my life. But my mother's an artist and my son is an artist. 
And I couldn't imagine them doing a sketch a day. How do you, how? <laughs> I, what happened is about 10 years ago, I started doing, I started doing sketch cards. Right. And it got to sort of the end of December. And I thought, do you know what? It would be really cool to try and do one of these sketch cards a day. Okay. So this is about 2012, 2013. And I started off very sort of naively. And I, you got about four or five days in. And you think, what am I going to draw? <laughs> so then I started thinking, right, I'll do, I'll do people's birthdays, celebrities' birthdays. Right. And then it got halfway through the year and I'd done 180 of them. And they were starting okay. to develop their own sort of steam. <laughs> and it was like pop culture and I was drawing, you know, various things. So I did a year of that without missing a beat. And then the second year, um, I found a, a journal and it was a 365 little squares in a book. So I did that for a year. And then yeah. I eventually, yeah. after I think about five years, I did an oil painting a day. Oh, yeah. I wow. taught to do, use oils. <laughs> right. Um, I so I did it slowly. I was doing um, gouache paintings like in the summer before a day, so doing portraits of um, celebrities or uh -huh. artists or whoever. And then I thought, well, let's try acrylics. So I then started oh. doing, <laughs> and then it got to the end of the year, and I thought, right, I'm going to do a challenge. And I did an oil painting, 365 oil paintings, and it started okay. up a month of sky. So I just painted sky. So I was basically right, right. To do. So I just had to make sure I put some oil paint on a canvas, and I did it every morning. So I'd get up at five o'clock or six o'clock in the morning mm. and do that. But I also developed a love of drawing buildings. It was like, what? What do I not like drawing buildings? <laughs> So I thought, basically, took away from drawing faces, and I did lots right. of buildings, I did port, you know. And then through lockdown, I ended up doing um, my lockdown journal, if you like. Okay. I ah. And I published it. So I was, I was drawing the buildings mm -hmm. around, because in, I don't know, in other places, but in the UK, we weren't allowed out. Yeah, we had that right. for a little while before the. Well, I don't ago. want to get into. I don't want to get into politics. Sorry. It wasn't even politics. <laughs> no, online. in America, in America was politics. We're America pushing that is. away. We're pushing that away. Right, but this this affected our. So I was basically just yeah. drawing. Yeah. To build the opposite, and I was putting it up on Facebook, mm -hmm. and I was getting approached by local businesses going, "Could you draw my dad's butchers?" And I was okay. suddenly being approached to draw people's houses and buildings wow. that's cool um, yeah yeah and um, as i said on the on the back of that i did a, i published a calendar of the local businesses around the area right 2020 um but then i've what i've done this year as i've been doing what i call a panel a day so instead of doing just a sketch a day i've been doing a panel of comics so hence Penny Pentagram went into the machine of me doing a panel a day. Right. And I did six pages of comics over a, a space of a month. Um, wow. I mean, this is no, I've just done this now. This is a little oh mystery gosh. sketch card. Um, you can't see it, obviously not a face for radio, but I just sat <laughs> a sketch card. But it's amazing. Um, but yeah i'd sit there I, and doodle and i might have a couple circles i i mean <laughs> I, I i you know i i have other artistic abilities drawing is not one of them so i'm just absolutely flummoxed by people who can just do that it's just 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 you sit there and you're like okay now i'm gonna draw this and i i'm always in awe of that and i can't so fathom how you do that is that it's a, it's as i said it's like a journal of your life so in these panels a day and drawings a day I got right. married I got married oh so I took the sketchbook <laughs> on honeymoon with me oh I don't I know bet she was not happy about like that, that one that, that wouldn't be <laughs> happy I've got a five-month-old baby there's a drawing that I did in hospital of like the curtains and mm -hmm. my little baby 
one one hour old in like the little cot thing and my wife's hand mm -hmm. so i was even doing the drawings in the, in the well hospital. you weren't giving birth so i think that might have been a little easier <laughs> but you know i was distracted yeah. <laughs> andrew i have a question where can people see these uh, this artwork that you've done is it, it online is. some of it says, yeah I, I mean i do have a, a website okay is, I, I actually was there but let everyone else know what the address is if you could remind me very quickly i think it's, isn't is it, it andrew richmond, andrew richmond <laughs> art yeah art dot com, dot, so, dot com. is it dot yeah. com um I, you know I, I have it here while you're talking i'm gonna look it up <laughs> again, i have it right here the whole journey andrew richmond art.com andrew richmond art.com that's what it is i see it right here so andrew I, I have it down i just and i'm not going right. to give you the pin number you can't have my, pin <laughs> number. You can't have my mother's have... maiden name oh i was going to ask that i was going to ask that yeah well, so actually what was the street you lived on as a child what was the street you lived oh, yeah. on as there a child what's your, favorite, Shire. what's your favorite pet's name that's it. Now, what's your favorite pet's name? Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, we can we can work out your your fairy name. Just give us. <laughs> your name. I have my porn that, name. I have a porn <laughs> name. I don't need it. Um, no. Uh, <laughs> yeah, but also okay. it's all over. It's all over Instagram. Um, yeah. I've been I've been documenting on social media on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. So if people actually found it, you can go back and there are thousands of drawings, mm. literally thousands. My literally website thousands. Is so how much longer do you think you're going to keep this up? <laughs> <laughs> to the he's, day he's, yeah, giving yes. us an interesting, he's giving us an interesting look there, folks, because you, you can't see until it. I, until I kick the bucket. Um, kick, I, the yeah, bouquet. I mean, I, kick the bouquet. <laughs> let's keep up appearances here folks let's... there we go That's... <laughs> well I, I tell people too that you know i'm going to be dead i'm going to die at my desk they're going to have to pry the desk out of my hands because i have a little bit of a workaholic situation but it's not nearly as interesting as what you guys do yeah but i i'm hoping that eventually after 30 more years of drawing i'll do <laughs> one decent drawing and then ah! oh no but that's what you want you want to spend your life to go that's true to go to, don't live on your laurels or what you've done in right. the past it's the future you know i mean that's what i'm a i'm an elderly gentleman now and i don't think you're as elderly as i am i don't think you're as elderly as if we're um uh, oh probably thank you thank you very much thank well, i don't you. know I, I was making a joke you went, you, you went um, for the gut there no 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 do you remember john pertwee turning into yes Tom oh yeah yes however yeah. however in america we did not get uh, i my station did not get america until 1978 so i watched tom baker first but i was i was alive at the port where i would have been watching pertwee I may have, as a little baby, been watching Trouton, but I've been, I, if I was in England, I'd be watching <laughs> Pertwee. That's it. I would have been old enough for Pertwee. Um, let me, let me steer this a little back. We were talking about uh, an email that just came to us about, that we just got about an additional story uh, in Pandora. And we brought this up a few uh, in the first half, but I wanted to talk about it. Joe, what is home? Home is, um, oh gosh, how do, how do I describe it? It's a story that uh, came through. Uh, mm -hmm. Rob, at that time, I believe it was his first comic pitch. Um, I believe he is writing um, for other comics and he has gone on to do other things now, but um, it, it came through last year and it hit me in the feels I cried and okay. I don't want to put people off um it's just like why would I pick up a comic that makes me cry but um it is such a poignant lovely little story mm -hmm. but also out of sadness there is some 
inspiration and there is some hope. Um, it's a story about a young boy who believes that there's something living in the walls of his house. Um, the, the update that went out on Kickstarter uh, points out that it's actually a, a love letter to, to Rob's departed mother. His mum passed away uh, before he wrote the story. So um, mm -hmm. without going into too many details, um, but she she before she passed away, she developed Alzheimer's. So oh, it's uh, a, a beautiful little uh, supernatural story um, that is illustrated by Aid Hughes. Um, I've already mentioned previously that he, he illustrates uh, V for the 77. He's also uh, appeared in Pat Mills' Space War. Um, uh, yes, I've read that. Yeah, that's, that's a good, that's good. He is an amazing artist. He's, he's one of my favourites. And I, I've been very lucky to have uh, been able to buy a couple of uh, his pieces for my own wall. I've got them up in my, my living room. <laughs> so mm. um, I, I would very much like this character sketch that he has produced for the, the strip. Um, and he's also going it's to... It's gone, hasn't it, Joe? Sorry? I think it actually has gone. Has it? I oh. Think so. <laughs> oh. oh. <laughs> that was quick. That was very quick. Well, we've been optimistic, aren't we? Yeah, yeah. But, um, but certainly, <laughs> um, there was only one person that I could think of could illustrate it. Um, it's also set in Wales. Um, an aid is based in mm -hmm. Wales. Uh, based in Barmouth so yeah it, it's um, it's a poignant story as is dare I say the, the theme for Pandora is one mm -hmm. that is of loss um, with our star nav story um, Stella Sunbright is the last of well one of the last of her kind um, that's uh, the story that's illustrated by Anna Morozova and written by the mighty Alan Hebden. Um, mm. We also have a, a beautiful little story that takes on the Irish Banshee myth, and that's written by one of our, they are an absolute rising star in, in comics, uh, Anna Averts, uh, who has also written for the 77. Right. In the past. Um, and that's illustrated by Gary Burley, um, who's, uh, again, it was one of those artists that I could immediately match to this story. Um, there is, I'm just trying to think, there's Penny Pentagram. Um, mm -hmm. That's pretty transformative for Penny because I was so thrilled that um, I was able to uh, gain permission from David and Andy to bring um, Penny over to Pandora it, it was one of my favourite strips in uh, the 77 and David Thomas is fascinating. Um, he's another one where, you know, call up for five minutes and then two hours later, we've gone down this thoroughly strange and eclectic rabbit hole of uh, yeah. facts and, and findings. So, yeah. Those are the best conversations. Yeah. <laughs> I, I have a question because the, the book was supposed to be 36 pages. Is it going to be longer now? With the it bonus be, story? Yeah, so with the bonus story, you will be getting a bit more bang for your buck. Yeah. Um, so um, there will also be some uh, rewards coming through. Um, so Andy mm -hmm. is going to be illustrating. And I don't know whether uh, this, I'm, I'm sure I've seen similar in Europe, but I don't know whether it, 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 it sort of reached um, the States. Um, we used to have a thing, and we still do actually, called a paper fortune teller. And it's a piece of origami okay, yes. that you then manipulate with your hands. Yes, and... we had those. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, we, yeah, we, I played those, we used those when we were kids, yeah. Yes. There will be a penny pentagram version appearing. Oh, oh yes. The, yeah. uh, stretch goal. Um, but that's, that's still to be decided so mm. yeah there are additional things going to be appearing pretty soon right. um and david's written a, a short story that yeah, we're hoping yeah, to do yeah. as a little um 
sorry, Dane and I, again, radio, we create <laughs> this tiny little sort of A6. Yeah, Andrew likes doing vid- visual things on a radio program. <laughs> I'm just saying, he's in a wrong medium. It looks like oh, no, a he's cool an artist. He's a, hold on, hold on. He's an artist, so he's visual. That's why he keeps doing yeah. visual things. Yeah, he's, not, he's not understanding the concept of radio right now. <laughs> I mean, we, we could have snooker on radio or darts or a ventriloquist. <laughs> yeah. um, it all happened. <laughs> so, Joe, where can they find this Kickstarter campaign? So um, we're over on Kickstarter, and if you type in Pandora into the search bar, you will find us. Um, I'm just trying to find the the actual link, so bear with me. But so we'll have the link on our website. We'll have the, we'll put the link on our website, Brilliant. so Thanks. that'll be there. Um, just to let people know, uh, there's some of the rewards. There's a print edition uh, for seven pounds. And for the United States, it would be a six pound shipping, which comes around to about $17 and 13 cents uh, for those in America for uh, the digital edition for everyone is four pounds, which in America is about 527. Just thought I'd throw that out there uh, for, you know, those people in America who are interested. I know we have a lot of most of our listeners. We, we wish we want to get other listeners too. But yeah, most of our listeners right now are in America. So I wanted to give the American prices. Um, it's really we're, worth your guys' uh, while. Just, if you're an American, you want to back us. It's worth your while. Absolutely. To, get physical, to get a physical sketch as well. So you're gonna spend yes. a bit of P P and P. Get a sketch. Yeah. I mean, there's there's mm-hmm. a couple of mine left of it. I've got a couple of slots. Um. Uh. That I I was gonna do a penny, but I'll probably end up doing a commission. Um. So they're available. Okay. For the physical comic, yes, a PDF will look so, great. So if I, if I, a, a commission, so if I wanted a, a Doctor Who one, you'd be able to do it for me? Oh, gosh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Andy is amazing at um, uh, caricatures and also um, uh, d- d- portraits. Um, so, yeah, certainly he, oh. he knocked that out of the park. Yeah. Right. And I... I'm also a massive Who fan. Well, when we started the show back in 2012, it was a Doctor Who show. Right. And it's moved to science fiction since then because there's less... The Doctor Who is not as big anymore. It, once RTD comes back and people start be, being into it, we may w- rethink our show, but it, it's kind of tapered off, especially in the States. Um, okay, I, and I hate to kick it on that, but we are going to come back. You're listening to The Mark Who 42's universe podcast on Spreaker, on Apple, uh, Google, everywhere around the net on markwho42.com, Florida Geek Scene, Geekcast Radio Network, and all the other podcast platforms everywhere. We'll be back with more of Mark Who 42's universe. Because the world needs another movie podcast. The Geekcast Radio Network presents for your listening pleasure, The Cinema Geek. Hosted by Amanda, Kevin, Matt, and Dan. Each week we dive headfirst in the landscape of movies as we discuss movie news, play movie games, go in-depth on reviews, and even have a top ten countdown or two. Also, don't miss our director retrospective series where we review noted director's movies film by film. Bottom line is, if you love movies and love podcasts, you need to experience The Cinema Geek. You can find us on iTunes, Blog Talk Radio, or GeekCastRadio.com. Welcome back to the Mark Who 42's Universe podcast here everywhere on the net at markwho42.com. You're listening. You could be listening at GeekCast Radio Network. You could be listening at uh, Florida Geek Scene. You could be listening at all the podcast platforms around the world, including Audible. We're on Audible. You can be an Amazon subscriber and, you know, listen to us on Audible. Um, I'm your host, Mark Baumgarten. With me today is my co-host, Vicki Jokabowski. And if you've been listening previously, which I hope you have, you know that we are talking about Pandora, the comic that has a Kickstarter campaign from the 77 right now. And we've got Joe Healy and Andrew Richmond on. Hey, guys, welcome back. Hi, hey. All right. So let, let's kick off this bonus section by asking a question. What is your fascination with independent comics? And this is for both of you. 
Um, I think I'll leave that one to Andrew because I'm so new to, to, to the scene. Um, All right. So my, my fascination with independent comics is that we can put out what we want. We're not beholden to anyone. We can do what we want. But so Andrew... This, for me, in this country, uh -huh. when, I was, when I was a very early teenager, there was a guy called Alan Moore that was yes. starting to break. Yeah. And in the UK, he was in he was doing articles in a comic called Mighty World of Marvel. Uh-huh. And there'd be reviews, and there were little sidebar reviews of self-published comics. And it'd be a little photo, and it'd be someone like Lou Stringer would be doing a, a comic. It's about 81, 82. Right. And you'd send your post, your little check, your little postal order off to mm. these guys. Mm. And that's how I discovered them. So, and then I, as a kid, I was making my own little comics. Mm -hmm. But you could buy these things and they were being reviewed. And I then went to my first comic convention and it was just a room full of, this is in 1986. Uh-huh. Of people. So you started late. You started late. <laughs> well, I was, I was 18. So ah. I was Oh, you by know. the way, you've just proven I'm older than you. Just say oh, it. Okay. <laughs> I just turned 18. I was by a year. By a year. By a year. There we go. But with the same, similar vintage. Um, yeah. That's where I discovered indie well, comics. Like fine wine. Yeah. <laughs> and there's also um, a comic in this country called Escape that Paul Gravett mm -hmm. was putting together. Um, and also the music papers at the time were publishing comics so alan moore was doing um what would, what would have been laser um erase, um axel press button in sounds all but right you guys knew that so in the in the uk we had melody maker sounds and nme and they'd run little comic strips and they were by the underground indie guys at the time. People okay. like Eddie Campbell and Phil Elliott. And that was my fascination. And I, you know, and then as later on in life, you sort of dig out and you find that in when you go to a comic shop, there's just tons of self-produced indie stuff. Um, and then things like Cerebus. Oh, Cerebus was great. Oh, yes. Um, I worked at a comic store back then, so I had access to that. Yeah, it was just, it was a breath of fresh air. Yes, I think it was because of Alan Moore. Uh -huh. He was doing this sort of very clever. And then you can see that there's other people. And mm -hmm. then on the back of that, you discover um, Art Spiegelman. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And both of the guys, you know, and, and what they were doing. And it's just that amazing journey. Yeah. And, and simultaneously, John Byrne was doing stuff with the X-Men and Frank Miller was doing stuff with Daredevil. Yeah. And then it's sort of, again, that guy Alan Moore did Watchmen and, and various things like that. But to me, it was still quite indie and quite alternative. Okay. And then it keeps going. And then now with the Kickstarter, we've just uh -huh. got a voice. You know, there's yeah. a new title every every day yeah I, I i love the fact that kickstarter helps people publish things that they're able to to you know i have a friend martin piero who uh runs uh well, he's gonna kill me for not remembering a uh, cosmic times and they put out comic books and he does campaigns to make money for that to pay the artists and the writers and things and the publishing costs it's amazing what kickstarter allows you to do uh, um, now, and Andrew, I know that you've done uh, some self-publishing uh, in the recent past, haven't you? Yeah, yeah I did um, one last Halloween called Dead by Dawn mm -hmm. um, that we put on Kickstarter. And we, right. again, because we'd managed to get a bit of money for it, we got Charlie Adelard of Walking Dead to do oh. it. Um, we had Steve Pugh to do um, Steve Pugh, mm -hmm. who's Animal Man and tons of different titles. Yeah. He does a, a short story. Um, 
obviously I've got a copy here that I could show you, but it's radio, so I've been already told for that. <laughs> oh, no. Another visual. No, um, oh, oh, good. You learned. You learned. Okay. <laughs> so I'm not going to grab to myself. It feels like you, seems like you do a lot of horror. Seems like you did a lot of horror. Is that true? Yeah, I like. Yeah, I, I love love horror as a genre. Mm -hmm. But then also, yeah, I'm I'm flexible. I I. I think, as I said, because of the pandemic, mm -hmm. I ended up just saying yes to a lot of projects. <laughs> so I'm a I'm the colorist on a couple of very successful Kickstarter books. Okay. Um, one called Harker, and one called Gravestown. Mm -hmm. um, and I was approached to be the colorist. I'm going okay. I'm the letterer on various comics as well, because I'm a in my day job, I'm a graphic designer. Ah, okay. It's bread and butter to me. I can, yeah. I can turn my hand uh, to pen and ink stuff. I do a lot of my, I mean, the penny comics are done on my iPad. So I, I'm sitting there all hours of the day when the baby's asleep. Right. Sometimes not asleep. <laughs> I was going to say, um, really? yeah, you can't you control that. Old, that's right? not for you. It's not yeah. for you to control. But if at five o'clock in the morning, she's still asleep. I'll come downstairs and I'll do a couple of hours um, just to get the, the things done. But yeah, I mean, I, I love I love the horror as a genre. Um, and I've done quite a few of those. But yeah, we just can't stop creating stuff. Mm. There's, I mean, Joe's brother has got a secret project that he's working on that we won't mention. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think he just let the cat out of the project. bag. No, 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 secret no, project. Well, we have a secret thing. We have a secret thing coming in issue seven of uh, the seventy-seven on the inside back cover, but we won't tell you what that is. We just say it's a secret. Uh, it's a top secret well, thing. You'll find about it Pandora, it's about the secret uh, within. So yes. Indeed. Secrets are important. So yeah, so there's always a secret, but there's so much stuff that we've got, so many stories we can tell, you know. And as as you said earlier, we would love this to be a weekly or a monthly comic. Yeah, I think we all would. And going back to the beginning of the pandemic, a lot of us were mm. furloughed, and yeah. we were furloughed yeah. for three or four months, if not more. Some guys were almost a year, mm -hmm. um, and if we have that now, what we know, we could <laughs> we could be doing a, a monthly comic. We could be I doing. Yeah, yeah. I wasn't actually furloughed, and I was what I worked full time all the way right. through. There you go. Um, and what I'd really like to stress to people, um, I never imagined I'd get into uh, comics or, or small press. Initially, I wanted to be a book illustrator. That, that's oh, where yeah. I, my background is. Right, right. I'm, a, an, I'm an artist. Um, family and life got in the way. Uh, I was caring for my father who had motor neurone disease. Mm. So I had to sort of change career paths. Um, but anyway, I digress with that. <laughs> What I'd like to say is, don't don't think it's too late. If 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 you've got the will, if you've got the resolve, there are so many different ways of achieving your dreams um, and achieving things uh, like comics. Um, getting a comic out there, um, Kickstarter or we say Kickstarter, we say any type of crowdfunding. It's an amazing way to get your ideas out there. Um, but yeah, just never take no for an answer and just do it. I don't want to be a bit too, like, you know, um, aspirational and internet. -based, <laughs> but, but yeah, it's never too late. And what I would say is the pandemic has sort of made the it's made the playing field a bit more level and it's made yeah. it mm -hmm. um, uh, sort of, uh, how do you, how do you put it? it? It's made it easier for people, you know? Yeah. Yeah. 
but you've really got to put the hours in. That's the thing yes. that, I, that I'm saying. I mean, that's with my daily sketches. Yeah. I and mean, I was doing daily sketches alongside doing comics as well, as alongside a day job. Right. Your family. So yeah. you've really got to be committed. You can't just go, oh, yeah, I do a comic. I do a comic. Yeah. Or I do a, you know, I'm in a band. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Oh, you know, in my bedroom. You know, like, <laughs> that commitment. Don't go to the extreme that I did. Um, whereas I was working 37 hours a week um, remotely from home. But um, also then obviously uh, staying on to, to deal with the comic and, and other issues. Um, and I, I've actually developed a... Uh, thrombosis in my leg so blood clots mm. so my um my little fitbit's screaming at me at the moment telling me to get up but uh, don't do that yep. don't don't put your try and find a good middle ground don't put yourself you need to put the errors in absolutely yeah. things don't fall in your lap they really don't we've no. worked bloody hard for this sorry i hope that's not too too strong <laughs> yeah but we've we've worked really hard, and um, you you do have to put the errors in. But like I say, it's never too late. If you've got an idea, you've got a dream, you'll be able to achieve it with a bit of tenacity. Um, don't take no as the first answer, um, but just remember that you have to work for it, and yeah. it won't come to you. You 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 need to do, put the errors in yourself. Yeah. I mean, a, a couple of years ago, I started to develop repetitive strain on my right hand. Oh. So what I did is I switched to my left. So I started drawing with my there left you go. hand. There you go. My daily sketch with my left hand. And some of it, and it, wow. it was actually when I was doing oh. all the things. So there's a month of left-handed all things. Ambidextrous there. Yeah. Nice. Well, someone actually joked. They said, oh, because I did a, a painting of my right hand. And they said, well, do a painting of your left hand. <laughs> Sorry, yeah, the other way around. And right. I was like, oh, that's a good idea. So I did a month and I actually rested my hand and saved it right. from, from cramping up. So oh. all, what, like Joe's saying, put the hours in. But if there's an obstacle, mm -hmm. just go around it. Just yeah. do something that we're creative. Come up with a, an idea. Let's let's draw with your non-dominant hand. Um, but yeah. But just draw. I mean, if you're an artist, just draw. If you're a writer, just write. Yeah. You know? I, I think you both critic, of you guys really critic, keep quiet. <laughs> or that, yeah, thanks. <laughs> your critic, learn to write or draw. <laughs> you're a show host. <laughs> right, I, guess, I so I, I'm just gonna talk and talk and talk and never stop talking and just keep talking. I'll stop. Uh, Vicky, yeah, Vicky. yeah, yeah. I can talk a lot too. God help yeah. me. God help the world. But yeah. I, I have to say that you guys really hit on something that you know, as a viewer or a reader or someone who is enjoying the artistic endeavor of somebody else, and you know, I always want more. But I think that people who haven't seen how um, comics are developed or any artistic medium is developed and not realizing how much work truly goes into it. You know, people just look at it. It's like, oh, well, you just doodled something, right? No, there was this time, effort, thinking, planning, editing. And unless you've done something in that realm, a lot of people have no clue how much it takes to get us what we love so much. So I'm always impatient and I always want more. But I at least can say that I understand. I, I have friends who write books and they tell me how the process is. And I have artists in my family. And it's an amazing wild ride you guys have to go through to give me this stuff that I personally love. And I mean, it, might, it might take you half an hour to read a comic, but it might have taken that group of people six months. Yeah, yeah exactly. To you know, to, to develop it and to do it. It's like listening to a song. It's mm -hmm. only three minutes. No, it's only three minutes. Yeah. It's taken those guys an entire career. Yes. To write that. And it's the same with what we do. It's it's not, we've not just come into this. It's been built, like Joe says, we've been building up to it. Mm -hmm. you no, know, and it's, this is just one of the, the peaks, you know, that we've, we're involved in. Um, 
I can't even I can't even bring myself to imagine what it would be like to do weekly. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I'd love I, it. Yeah, well, you would love it, Andrew, because you do a picture every day. You do pictures well, I, every day. So you... I, I'm a designer in publishing, so I... Oh, yeah. Um, we do, like, glossy magazines, and I do mm. two a week. So I design oh, okay. two of them. So we do about eight, um, eight seven or eight a month. Mm -hmm. So I'm used to deadlines, and I thrive on them. <laughs> so, yeah. But it's right, still I'll, crazy I'll, when I'll... you think about that. You know, how many of us could churn out something of of that pedigree and that um yeah that that the blood, sweat, and tears. I mean, most of us wouldn't be able to do that in 20 years, let alone 20 weeks. So uh but it's and... only it's only gonna take it's only gonna take one of us to inherit a million pounds. Yeah. Ah. One of us, and then we'll set up a publishing. We'll like, right. Yeah, let's make a pact. Let's make a pact. Let's make a pact, all four of us. That if we if yeah. we get a million dollars, if we win the lottery, or we get, uh, I God yeah, forbid, exactly. God that forbid, go as far then, as it used to. I know, anymore. God forbid, an inheritance. <laughs> let's make a pact, and we're gonna. And I used to have a pact with my friends that if one of us won the lottery, that we'd all uh, I'd buy houses for every, we'd buy houses for everyone. Yeah. So we could do something instead of buying houses, we produce comics and stuff. Well, I'm gonna tell you a million dollars would only buy you two houses in Reno. <laughs> well, okay, but this this was like 30, 40 years ago. Right. This, Back when you I'm could get a house now. for a decent amount of money. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. You could get a doll's house. Yes. I, everyone could get I you get a doll house and you get a doll house and you all right. All right. Uh, I have a question for Joe. Joe um what was it like having parents who actually approved of and contributed to your love of comics i asked because i didn't neither did i <laughs> it, it the only way i can answer it is it that was my normal so uh -huh. i don't i can't i've used this phrase quite a lot i can't imagine what it would be like for somebody else i can't imagine not going into a house and tripping over books. I can't mm. imagine not going up the stairs and falling down on my face because of the pile of books that my mum had left on the stairs. Wow. Wow. On a Saturday morning for my parents not to turn up with a stack of comics. Um, I think I was very privileged. There wasn't a lot of money, uh, you know, I mean, mm -hmm. my father had a good job, but it, we was, were certainly working class. They didn't there was never any money um left spare but they just mm -hmm. liked comics um and i think with my mum especially it was her love of um comics and uh, books my grandfather um fought in world war one and he was injured at the sum uh he was actually blinded so uh when my mum was a little girl and she could actually read that was her role that was her job in life mm -hmm. was to read to my grandfather mm -hmm. and he loved his I think his favorite was ghost and horror stories so she would be reading these these books to him these these stories or they'd be listening to the radio and I think that's where she got her love for that genre really so it's probably actually passed down from my grandfather um but yeah I realized I was very privileged the only comic they wouldn't buy for for us as a family mm -hmm. was my Care Bears ma magazine. Oh, good. Um, That's good. I'm, I'm that, they, they, blew the, blew, they drew the line yeah. somewhere. They drew that was good. It's really funny because um, one of my my short stories uh, appeared in the annual, the uh -huh. 17th called Krampus Night. Yes, yes. A very naughty boy called Maxie and the artist, Mark, Mark Marin. Okay. I found out halfway through sort of a process. He was one of the animators on the Care Bears movie, Night Night. Oh. <laughs> as soon as I found that out, so I was just like, you know, that, that was the highlight of my year, that year. <laughs> the Care Bears movie. My mum, oh, she was so aggrieved. She moaned all the way through it. It, it was just so funny. <laughs> But I didn't care. I was there. I was there for the Care Bear stare. But um, yeah, I was 
again, <laughs> do you know, that's how random the 77 is, my, my involvement uh -huh. in all this, that I can, I've worked with somebody who worked on a film that was one of my favourites as a child. Um, we've got, like I've mentioned with Pete Weston, mm -hmm. Steve McManus, I owe him such a, a gratitude, uh, such a kind man for his intervention with mm -hmm. Pandora um, led to me um, being able to choose a script from Alan Hebden, who I must say was uh, his Meltdown Man was one of, one of my favourite comic strips in 2000 AD. Okay, um, yes, I remember that, yeah. And I actually um, met Alan at the very last Lawless convention at Bristol. Um, I think it was 2019. Um, and I managed to get my copy of Meltdown Man, the, the collective version, um, signed by him. But like I say, it was Steve's intervention um, that led me to Alan and then to this most fantastic story called Starnav, which again, I'm very privileged to have had parents who were readers who encouraged this curiosity and who didn't really care about what PG was and what, you yeah. know, these you know that really children really shouldn't be reading that but but certainly my mum um uh, led me to Anne McCaffrey uh mm. and an, an author called Elizabeth Moon so those two authors put out a load of books called uh, the Sassinac series and it was uh, Alan's story I wouldn't say it, it it's not reminiscent, but I sort of started getting this whole, well, this is a, a strong female lead um, set in space. I really love this and I really want it. And then it was um, by pure chance that I was given Anna Morozova's um, contact details and I approached her and I let her know about this project. And again, she's she's been very kind in in participating with us um her artwork is is stunning and um yeah so it was this it's all come together on on the back of that initial love that initial exposure as a child to all these crazy genres that weren't the Berenstain Bears you know weren't mm. almost <laughs> a tank engine but um yeah I, I'm really pleased with Star Nav and I'm really pleased with the reception that it's been getting that, um, you know, we're able to bring this new story by Alan to a, a wider and potentially younger audience as well. Because that's uh, where I'd say that the Pandora comic um, could sit well at is a young adult audience. So we've got a very young artist. She's still at uni. She's still studying in her final year. Um, uh, her name's Lola, Lola Bonato, and um, she's providing um, the artwork for a story by um, a guy called Jamal Luckett. Now Jamal's, um, he's, he's based in Chicago and um, he's written a zombie story, but it's not your classic zombie. It's not, it's not the 28 Days Later and it's not a Romero zombie. But mm -hmm. it's a story with also a social message. Um, so uh, he's, he, one of his daughters is um, autistic and he's written this story with the protagonist as a young autistic woman. So it's, it's just so awesome to, to have that, that story in the comic. And uh, yeah, I don't know whether Andy... Can can he elaborate? <laughs> you know, were you able to to have armfuls of comics when you were younger? Or yeah, I mean, I I love to I love to draw from a, a very mm. age, and my granddad would go and visit them on a Sunday, and he'd have a comic for me. So it was Dracula Lives and Planet of the Apes. Um. Well, yeah. I, I froze. <laughs> so, so he was, he'd get us the comics. And as I said, we were very lucky in this country to have things like Monster Fun, mm -hmm. yeah. which was a, a, 
you know, a, a sort of spoof of, of, of popular culture, but right. monsters. So you'd have gums, which is a shark with no teeth because of jaw. <laughs> you'd have Kid Kong, who's a schoolboy gorilla. Okay. Um, oh my God, that sounds like an absolute amazing thing I must get my hands on. Well, they're actually bringing it back. Rebellion, Ooh. bringing back Monster Fun um, this next month, I think it is. Oh, are they? Yeah, they've done a couple of specials. Okay. So Rebellion do the Misty special. Yeah, and yeah, Spooky yeah. Special, and it's a Monster Fun and Buster. And they're bringing back Monster Fun, um, okay. which again you'd be able to order from rebellion yeah um because i mean I, I, no i was gonna say yeah. i have a subscription a digital subscription to 2080 and the judge Fred magazine so i'll have to look for monster fun yeah. If, if yeah okay yeah for monster fun but i've as i've said earlier i've got a baby in the house so i'm mm -hmm. gonna have to go and help put her to bed okay but i, I wanted to on, on to finish for all me, right yes i want okay. to say what we what we don't realize what we're doing creating these comics mm -hmm. is we Joe just said we're working we actually are working with Steve McManus and Alan Hebden I'm I've lettered the story the stories that um Pete Weston's done he's won a BAFTA oh we don't have time we work so fast <laughs> we don't even have time to think about what we're doing right we, you're not you don't have a chance to bask in what what we're creating you know and because of the pandemic there's been no comic cons yeah we met in real life fortunately bristol in england there's mm -hmm. lawless in two months time. yes, yes. have copies of blazer and 77 and pandora and also next weekend I'm actually going to meet David Thomas for the first time. He's coming to Bath, where I live. Oh. He lives in Cardiff. Mm -hmm. He's already booked his, ticket, his train ticket in advance. And we're going to meet up and we're going to walk around the city. I'm going, to, I'm going to show him all the crazy places in Bath, which there's a lot of. Um, and I'm going to hang out. And I've worked with him for, for like over a year. You know, Joe, as far as I'm aware, is is like three centimeters high. <laughs> <laughs> Just a tiny little, a tiny little head on the computer screen, um, and we're all going to meet up in real life one day. Excellent. And we'll that pint, there'll be that pint. There's this mystical pint that everyone's been talking. <laughs> yeah. Of a pint oh, of beer. I'll just be an absolute mess. I will be uh, in. Floods of tears once I meet up with everyone, particularly yeah, the team from the 77. Yeah. Uh, it'll just be like, yeah. <laughs> it's actually funny. Vicky and I have never physically met. We've never met We've, in person. No. The, my other co host, I've met, I've done things with Vicky, right. our latest. I've never met her. It's crazy, isn't it? Isn't it? Yeah. But we've, we've, well, we've, he, he is a few thousand miles from me. I mean, Joe, in, you know, in, in the big, we were what seventy miles away from me. Probably about that... yeah. We're not actually that far we're, away. We're not far away. Only we'll only take. But as I say, we you know I've I'm just coming off of COVID, mm -hmm. and uh, not I, you know I was aware of it for two years and didn't want to catch it. Then my wife and daughter had it, and for five mm. days I didn't have COVID. We we're all wearing masks. We were ventilating. Yeah. I did the lateral flow and it came up with two red lines. And it's like, you've got me. I've yeah. been got. And then they're better and they've been out today in the sun. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm sort of stuck. You're, you're I, not stuck. You're with us. You're not stuck I, anywhere. I was, I was drawing comics today, watching Tom Baker, Doctor Who. Oh, there you go. <laughs> there you go. Well, that sounds heavenly. <laughs> that sounds like you're having the best time. I don't know what you're complaining about. <laughs> but do you guys have BritBox? Yes. Yes. Britbox. So they have all the physical, whatever exists of Doctor Who. Yeah, all classic mm -hmm. Who. Yeah. yeah. And then so New I'm Who is on, on HBO Max over here. Yeah, I just watch it on loop. 
there's even a, a TV channel called Forces TV. Yes, it's on Forces TV so now. Forces yeah, as well. And I sit and watch that. And I'm just however, watching. however, I hear that the the announcer that talks before the do yeah. Doctor Who goes on on For Forces TV actually says some condescending things about it. Oh, oh, he, he, com he complains He's about cool. the special effects as he goes into the episode. Just, he says, not... I've not seen this since... So he's obviously a fan. David but... McEntee posted that he's doing it, and I'm like, huh. you know who David McEntee is, right? Right. He, he wrote a lot of Doctor Who books in the wilderness years. Yeah. yeah. But it's not... It's He actually says more than you need to know. Yeah. And he'll say it in a little bit of a, you know, it's... A, I guess he's joking. I guess he's, I guess he's joking. A little yeah. tongue-in-cheek. Yeah. yeah. Like, yeah. I never liked this episode. Maybe I'll watch it to see if I still don't. Yeah. That was right. I'm, I, can hear my, I can hear my wife out, outside the door. Okay. Uh, lovely chatting to you guys. Lovely chatting with you. Thank too. you, and, Thank you, Andrew really Richmond, cool. for coming on our show. I'm Mark 42. We'll talk to you again soon. And we can't Cheers, wait to guys. see Pandora. We've always there'll always be another new project. There you go. Maybe yeah. we'll have you on again. We should. We definitely will. You're a, you're a lovely Thank guest, you. and we're glad to have you. Bye, Andrew. Bye. Lovely chatting to you. Bye. Okay. Good night. Bye. Good night. Okay, so Joe, oh. now that you're still here, <laughs> laser focus turns on me. <laughs> okay. You you were talking about for the Pandora, you know, young young people would be good for, but who else? would Pandora be a must-buy for? Oh, goodness. Um, so anybody who's a fan of Alan Hebden, for sure. Um, mm -hmm. Anybody who... Um, I don't want to um, ascribe certain parallels to the, the story at all because I don't believe they're there. But anybody who was a fan of Halo Jones? Yes, uh, okay, yes. Number of... Oh, um, more, yeah comment and um say that it's it's on par and that 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 was quite a a fantastic thing to hear um these diehard 2000 ad fans um saying that those those ones who'd had um sneaky peeks of of the work um that that would like i say was was awesome to to hear um i think anybody who um likes an eclectic read um okay. it's not a chaotic read it's um i'd say it's an e eclectic curation um i've put together um a number of stories that struck a chord with me or appealed to me mm -hmm. um i'd like to think i'm not that eccentric but you know <laughs> have similar tastes and i've already mentioned this with with Andy Richmond you know that we'd we'd have these conversations and then suddenly it was like oh my god you like that as well you know where we had these these crossovers in genres and likes and dislikes so yeah I think anybody who um wants a fresh read um anybody who likes thoughtful fantasy and science fiction um there are deeper themes and messages mm -hmm not it's not throwaway stuff um it might it might affect you but there's also that inspiration as well and um i'd like to think that the stories have that little bit of hope um so yeah and of course my own story in there is this crazy um science fiction madness that andy sawyers has come up with with his art and um, anybody who reads the 77 is familiar with the cell yeah um silver jubilee which is um I, silver jubilee was amazing that was a great yeah. that was a great story so again i'm not riding on my brother's coattails but yeah that was <laughs> uh, dave stories that i had the privilege to read before he he actually submitted it to the the rest of the team for mm -hmm. uh, approval so yeah um, I think we, one of the things, it, we bounce off each other really easily. 
between mm -hmm. the whole of the team. So, so yeah, it's, um, I just hope people will enjoy it and, and read it as, um, for what it is, which is a comic that has been uh, put together by people who love comics. Mm -hmm. and just want to bring about a, a bit of a, a new take, a fresh take on comics, the comic anthology rather. All right, Vicky. Well, I, I have to say, if it's half as good as the description, it's going to be fabulous. And yeah. having now, you know, read the 77s and I am falling in love with comics all over again. And I like the mixture. It, it's kind of like when you, the old Twilight Zone uh, TV shows, you know, you had some that were scary that freaked you out. Yeah. And then you had some that were just hilarious or thoughtful or yeah. made you think or made you change your, it yeah. just, I, I love that because I am a eclectic person. When you look at my music taste, you look at my books, you look at my movies, I have such a wide range. It's not just a narrow. And so I like it when things are like that because it appeals to me. I yeah. haven't found a single story in any of the 77 that I didn't enjoy there are some that even surprised me that I enjoyed it but because I liked such a variety and I think that there's something for everybody and there's something new for everybody that they probably didn't know they'd love as much but they're going to open Pandora and they are going to be just absolutely amazed and I can't, these artists that that the 77 and Pandora has, has gotten together. So you got these great stories and then these amazing, talented artists that you're kind of like, why haven't we heard of this person or that person? Or, you, you know, now I'm starting to have new favorites and it's like, great. Now I've got a whole nother list of things. I've got to go mm. research and find and look at. And uh, I just, I can't wait for this to come out and I get to read it. I'm yeah. really excited for it. And I know it's going to be a while, but that's okay. I'll, I'll learn to be patient. <laughs> as soon as the digital copies are available, I'll make sure we get one to you. I know it's it's different than having a, a physical copy. but yeah. so Thank you. I did one of the, the backings too, because it was, oh, that looks good. My yeah. problem is trying to narrow down. Oh, but I want that, that, that. Okay, you can't have everything. The budget yeah. won't allow for that. Um, it's like, how much money do we have today? Okay, we can do this, you know? <laughs> <laughs> well, we, one of the things we're really conscious about at the moment, and it, it's global, that there is um, a certain pinch, uh, an economic pinch at the moment. Things aren't as uh, easy to buy let's put it like that and and the the knock-on effect for all industries is that yeah. um, materials are harder distribution yes. is more expensive so we one thing we've always done at the 77 and one thing i've carried over to pandora is that we don't want people to um be we want readers obviously but we don't yeah. want people to be uh, financially extending themselves um yeah. but we also want to make sure that the creators get a decent rate of pay definitely uh, very hard um when you are using crowdfunding which is why i i, I explained about like you know the, my gratitude to all the creators and those who have been involved in any way um their kindness absolutely knows no bounds but certainly um, we try our hardest to make something that's uh, economically available, um, but also give somebody a really good read at the same time. Yeah. And I've just been so fortunate that, again, it's that whole where suddenly there's a level playing field where mm -hmm. writers can come forward, where um, artists can be more visibly seen because of social media. Yeah. Uh, I've been super fortunate that I've managed to come across people who have either, this will be their first comic, um, mm. their first industry experience. Yeah. Also seeing new talent, new artists coming up like Lola. Certainly I can send you uh, a link to 
uh, her Instagram page, but her artwork's amazing. And mm. I just it's more like um, sort of like Euro man- manga. Um, but oh, not you know, but it, it's she's got such a style. But initially, I was really taken aback when I I first first saw her um, uh, sort of resume, her CV. Um, I thought. Okay, this is this is pushing me because I I'm expecting a certain style. Mm. And I started looking at more of her artwork, and it was just like oh, I've got to have her in this comic. <laughs> <laughs> I've got to have her in this comic, and I, I it's um it's 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 a privilege for me to help somebody else. You know, yeah. two years ago I had that that door open for me. It's nice to know that I'm able to do that to somebody else. And this, like I say, will be her first comic experience. Um, found out actually on the launch night, she's actually going to be using some of the artwork and what have you uh, for her um, university work. Oh. oh, nice. So again, that, that, that's, that's a privilege for me. You know, I think my, my mantra is always, you treat people uh, how you want to be treated. You go gently through life, and if a door opens for you, go through it. But certainly leave it open for other people. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, I'm really proud of what Lola's achieved and what she's she's brought to the story, because like I say, Jamal's story is a zombie story, but it's also got this social message that um, people yeah. with autism aren't always listen to. But sometimes, if you listen to them, they might actually have something that you you want to hear and <laughs> the protagonist and the, the hero in that story is a young autistic girl so it's um I, I'm really proud that that one I've been able to to bring that into sort of life as it were yeah yeah I have All to right. say the cost for whether that you get the um electronic version or the paper version it's not that it, much. It is, it's not it's a steal for the quality and the quantity yeah. of what you receive and it's not the size folks in america it's not the size of an american comic book it's magazine yeah. size it, it's like yeah. a 2000 ad or or just a magazine it's a bigger size and just to remind you um the digital edition is at four pounds in America. That would be around five dollars and twenty-seven cents. That's why you pay. You get a digital copy of it, and you help support uh, the campaign. Uh, if you want the print edition, it's seven pounds. Now there is more. You have to pay for postage and handling mm-hmm. if you're out. Um, and in America, that would be an additional six pounds. So basically, for Americans, it will cost seventeen dollars and thirteen cents to get a print copy. But they are really good quality, and yes. it's an amazing thing. We, of course, we haven't read Pandora yet because it hasn't come out. But if it's the same quality as the seventy-seven mm-hmm. and Blazer, then it's you know sm- hit it out of the yeah. knock it out of the ballpark. Basically, yeah. uh, we're going to start winding on the show. Vicky, do you have any last question? I do not. I just, you know, I'm, I'm a huge fan girl and I'm loving everything you guys are doing. When Mark first introduced me to the 77, I just kind of went a little gaga and <laughs> just, I'm, I'm like, I'm a huge fan. And I went to my son who's in his twenties and I'm like, you got to read this. You know, I gave some to my husband. It's like, you guys got to read this. This is the best thing yeah. ever. And my husband wasn't as much into comic books as I was um, when I was younger. And it's just, this is just so amazing. And my son was like me. He's like, and, and <laughs> where's the next one? Yeah. Like, well, I'll get it. I'll get it. <laughs> so nice job. Very nice job. That, that, that's so appreciated. Can I just say, thank you for giving me this opportunity to speak to your listeners. It's an absolute privilege to speak to people in America. Oh, sorry. The United States it, it really is and it, it's lovely to know that you know that our message our, our comics will have that wider audience as well I really yeah. hope that people will will maybe make a few discreet inquiries or you know just have come and have a peek at what we do yeah it really appreciated now My- we're sorry go ahead I no, didn't mean to interrupt you um, I was going to ask, um, 
can you please once again let everyone know where they can go to back this project yeah absolutely we're we're over on kickstarter and if you just enter pandora comic into the search bar you'll find us we're also out there on facebook so there is the pandora comic group Mm -hmm. um, and you can also find us um, posting on the 77 comic group as well. Now, just let everyone know the the Kickstarter campaign uh, ends Thursday, April 14th, uh, 5.30 p.m. Eastern uh, Daylight Time. Eastern, and uh, I guess that would be a um, 10.30 p.m. British Standard Time. That's correct. British Sun Time. Is it British Sun Time or British Standard Time? Summertime, um, British summertime, BST. What, okay, it's 10 o'clock, 10.30 BST. Um, one final question for Joe. Um, what is the future of Pandora and other projects from the 77 publications? Oh, crikey. Well, well, I've already talked I about I stumped her on the final question. Yeah, so um, we, we're relatively confident we will reach target um and i hope that doesn't come across as being uh you know i'd like to stay humble but we it's it's nearly there yeah um, pandora 2 we start working on that eminently so mm -hmm. the next week or so i'll be um approaching andy again and harassing him and <laughs> saying, <laughs> do this so um, yeah, we, we're looking at Pandora too. Um, I know that Alan has scripts two and three ready for Star now. Okay. So again, got a number of recurring stories that kick off in Pandora. There's Excellent. a one shots, but there are recurring. Um, the 77 is going from strength to strength. Um, mm. I, it's, yeah, I, I, how, do, how do I even describe that? It's, um, it, it we are planning ahead i think we we're in the end of 2023 so that's mm -hmm. how our schedule has already been set up i so, noticed there i noticed there's the shift presents uh the 77 or something i need to find when does that come out i need to know where to order that no i was under the assumption it was coming out this march but i do need to go back and double check yeah. with um, we'll certainly make sure that the, the dates are, are out there and publicised. Okay. But the, we will be hitting um, the mainstream stores in the UK um, and high street mm -hmm. stores at that. So we'll be um, oh. the shift presents. Yeah. So more of a con concise form. So you will be getting a bulk story within the comic. Um, but certainly... Right. When we know, when I know more about that, I'll I'll certainly be able to talk a bit more with more okay. of that. But uh, yeah, that that's quite exciting because um, the idea that I can go to W H Smiths in my town and see the seventy seven on the shelf that will just be that will be a pinch me moment. Yeah, I bet it would. Yeah. All right, uh, we've come to the end of this episode of Mark Who 40, the Mark Who 42's Universe podcast. Let's get the whole name in there. I want to thank uh, Joe Healy and Andrew Richmond for coming on the show. Joe, do you have any final words for our fans, our listeners? No, I'd just like to thank those who've bought our comic in the past um, and are going to be looking at Pandora pandora's kickstarter mm. and um as mentioned before thank you ever so much for allowing me to come on your podcast it's been an absolute blast to meet you both and uh hopefully we'll again. yeah uh vicky any final words go on kickstarter and back pandora do it right now <laughs> my words exactly we hope you enjoyed this episode of Mark Who 42's Universe. Uh, listen to us next time at the GeekCast Radio Network, Florida Geek Scene, MarkWho42.com, and all around the interweb thingy. Until next time, bye everyone. Thanks for listening to Mark Who 42's Universe with hosts Mark Baumgarten, Eduardo M. Fryer, Zion Kiros, and Vicky Jakubowski. 
This program was produced and directed by Mark Baumgartner. If you'd like to get in touch with us, please go to our Facebook page or email us at markboo42s.universe at gmail.com. You can listen to old shows at our website, markboo42.com, or even our YouTube page, markboo42. Markboo42's Universe, copyright 2022.